Welcome in everybody to Betting Pros. It is me, Joey P, Joe P. Zapia, and today my guest is the Welsh, my co-host from Leading Off over on the Fantasy Pro side, and we're going to break down the MLB wagering for you heading into the 2022 season. This is the preview show. We're going to talk a little win totals here when it comes to teams, the overs and unders we like early on here. We're also going to talk about some player futures, hand out some awards, and we'll get all the way to the division winners and, of course, World Series at the end of the day. And, Welsh, this is that time of year where we start to look at the teams and we think we know who we've got. And then, of course, as always, something happens like the San Francisco Giants come out of nowhere last year and show up with the Seattle Mariners and change the perspective. But I think it's a very exciting time here. We've got some rookies that are breaking camp, so that should be an interesting award to give out. But, Welsh, we've got an exciting potential 2022 season ahead of us. It's glorious. It's glorious with all the futures to be had. Uh, We were talking about this off air. I've never, even before gambling became legal here in Arizona, I never was like a crazy, crazy big futures guy. You madly into futures and very successful. (laughs) But I got to admit, it's kind of the most enticing I think it's ever been in years that I paid attention to it, watched it. Uh, Bogman and I had talked about it over years and years with the advent of the of baseball being incentivized to bring up rookies. Bam, we've got a whole bigger, different race for uh, Rookie of the Year awards. And even some of the win totals, I got to tell you, scouring through, there's some stuff in there that I'm like, am I missing something? What a... What am I missing? What is Vegas trying to do here? So if you are comfortable making a little bit of an investment for the future in the game that you love, discounts and uh, money to be made today, and hopefully we're going to nail some of those guys. Yeah, 100%, man. And and just to you know, kind of lay it out there, when it comes to these sort of early you know season wagers when we're starting out the top of the year, I like to think of it like investments. You know, you you see the things you like on the board and you invest a small amount or even a large amount, depending on what your bankroll is. And then as the season goes on, you reevaluate them. Is it time to get off of that investment and into another investment? Or is it time to double down that investment? Let's say, you know, you have Shoei Otani, who was a player last year who did this show. We talked about him for MVP. I said, if he pitches and he hits, how is anyone going to deny him? Dan Harris, of course, called me crazy. Both of those things were true. Shohei Otani was MVP and I am crazy. So Dan was right about one thing, wrong about the other. But it's the whole point of being in early, even in small amounts as small investments. And then as the season progresses, you reevaluate a month in, two months in, and then three, four months in. And then obviously at the end as well for that final push, if there's still money to be made. Now, when we're looking here, we're going to be using our betting pros site at bettingpros.com. We have all the consensus odds and all the different houses there, like BetMGM, FanDuel, DraftKings, they're all there. But what's great about this is it gives you the consensus line. Then you can go out there, see the things you like, and then find the best odds anywhere you can get them. And also, if you're going to be doing in-season wagering, I strongly suggest you take a look at our prop bet cheat sheet. So right there under MLB, you go under picks, you find the prop bet cheat sheet, and every day it's going to have that projection for you with certain players certain prop bets you can make there and the best location to make those wagers so if you haven't already head over to bettingpros.com because that is the place to be to make all these wagers and i know new york is legal now so a lot of people are getting into this a lot of people from fantasy world are starting to you know dip their toes in the water of gambling and i think it's a it's a fun thing to do and if you understand and you're a really good fantasy player there's money to be made. I know Welsh is a big prop market guy, so he's going to be a huge help yeah. on leading off with that stuff. That's your wheelhouse, is it not? I, I mean, I, I, I like the prop market, you know, not to give a, um, a cheap plug here, but I know, it, well, gambling stuff can be like intimidating for a lot of people. Still is for me. I, I'm not a sharp in any respect. And, you know, I, Joe, I'm not really sure you would consider yourself either. No. In the conversation we can have, uh, analyzing this stuff is a lot easier than, you know, getting into that area mm-hmm. of being crazy comfortable. I actually did a uh, little tutorial quote, I use air quote series, um, on an episode I called Bet This League, but it's on the In This League Fantasy Baseball podcast, on learning how to do player props. We did uh, player props, and then we did, uh, what was the other one we did? We Oh, we just did overall learning how to do spread betting and doing the over-unders, and, and then a full look with our dear friend Chris Meany on how to do player props. So... You, know, you hear player props, you might not be like, oh, I don't know. You can go and check, take a listen to that. Chris Meany and I break down all the ways of where you can attack and which ones you want to do. And then you can come over to Fantasy Pros. You can get on Betting Pros, and you could check out uh, the uh, prop sheet, player player prop sheet 
cheat sheet and all the great stuff they have and maybe that'll feel, make you feel a little bit more comfortable on what to attack because i think that's the biggest problem with player props by the way is there's so many so many what is the thing that you want to do outside of i think everybody talks about home runs but we talk about that all that if anyone wants to check out that little educational thing on uh, bet this league that we did all right, let's continue to educate let's the people, Welsh. Let's start with the over-unders on the games. So here are some of the win totals for some teams that uh, right now really pop to me, and I'm going to give you a few of them. The first one is the Mariners at 83 and a half. This is a team that won 90 games last year. They just acquired the reigning AL Cy Young and Robbie Ray. Uh, to me, this is uh, a huge upgrade in that rotation. I expect Logan Gilbert to make another step forward. We just got news that Julio Rodriguez is going to open – the season with the oh. team that is a huge win here for the Mariners they acquired Winker uh Suarez I think might be done but still you know they went out there and they made adjustments do I expect Mitch Hanniger at 40 bombs again no but 83 and a half I expect them to be much better than a 500 team especially as the Oakland A's continue to jettison players as Sean Manaya got dealt so the Mariners over at 83 and a half for me the wow. Rays at 89 and a half Welsh I don't know how many times you have to get beaten over the head with this the Rays are always going to win 90 something games it's it's how they manage the 162 season it's the way they do it they will make an addition to the team at some point in time that makes sense to them and add more offense most likely but to me this is a team once again every year we sit here with the Rays Every year it should be an over because every year it is. The White Sox went from 92 and a half to 91 and a half actually overnight when the Lance Lynn news broke. He's going to miss some time here, but I still like the over on this one. I still think they're the kings of this division. I think they're going to roll. I think top to bottom, it's a great offensive, defensive team, still a great rotation. Even if Lynn misses some time, the bullpen's very solid as well. And then it's the Brewers at 89 and a half. Another thing where I look mm. at the division itself. I really don't see a whole lot of competitors outside the St. Louis Cardinals really giving them any runs for their money. That pitching staff is so good. They've got a pipeline of some young pitchers as well. So those are the overs I like. The Mariners at 89 and a half, the White Sox at 91 and a half, the Rays at 89 and a half, and the Mariners at 83 and a half. So when you're looking at some of the uh, the overs, who kind of popped to you, Welsh, that you thought might be a good early investment? Well, I really like the Mariners one. Uh, it's interesting. You got a lot of high totals here. You got great teams. Mm -hmm. High totals can be a little bit scary, but I love the Mariners one. I'm such a, you know, I'm such a sucker for everything that they do. I absolutely love Logan Gilbert. I love the step that he's going to make. Uh, Julio Rodriguez. It's a whole nother ball game, you know, for me and my love. And I think they've got depth from outfield to infield. So I think it's a great team. 83 and a half. Fantastic. Love that one. The, not to not to say I don't like the other ones. It's just high totals. I picked on two really low total teams that I think actually made improvements and I'd be really interested in. Number one is the Royals and the Royals are at 71 and a half. And this team is built to win. That's what they are. They got brought in Zach Granke. They've got another year in of this really good young rotation. They got Brady Singer. They've got Daniel Lynch. They've got Chris Bubich. They've got uh, Jackson Kowar that's kind of sitting in the wings. Brad Keller's in there. I think they've got a really solid rotation. They've got a decent bullpen. And I think they have a fantastic explosive offense with Bobby mm -hmm. Witt in there. 71 and a half. That's really, really good. That actually might be one of my favorites when all push comes to shove. There's a, there are the under we're going to talk about might be my absolute favorite, but the Royals would be one that I would want to hammer at 71 and a half. And then this other one is kind of also about team context and improvement. It's the Tigers. The Tigers are down here. And I, and by the way, I didn't look at every single one of these. These were numbers I saw over on uh, just happened to be DraftKings at 66 and a half. So you might have to shop around whatever book you're looking at. Go on to betting pros and you can see all the totals. 66 and a half. I like that. Javi Baez comes in. Torkelson is in there. Again, this is kind of, you know, my MO here. You've got another year improved of these young pitchers with Tarek Skubal, Casey Mize, Matt Manning. Eduardo Rodriguez, they bring in to kind of, uh, you know, boost out that entire rotation. They just got better. They just, they're just they not awesome. They're not a great team, but they just got better. And at 66 and a half, there's a lot of upside. So as far as like two really, you know, I don't know, maybe stigma teams of not being good. I think both teams made concerted efforts to improve more teams in it. And I like both of those as far as uh, overs I would take on some team totals. Now, the Tigers right now, the consensus number is 77 and a half for the Tigers on betting pros. So it's something to take notice of. You can find it somewhere else cheaper in terms of uh, a lower number. You could certainly bet that variance. And that's why it's so important 
Uh, and that's why it's so great to have these tools at our fingertips. What is what is what this. are they what are they over there? They're 77 and a half as the consensus for the over under for the Tigers this year for winter. Oh, OK. And the consensus. Well, yeah, like I said, I just happened to find 66 and a half was over mm -hmm. on DraftKings. So that's a number that there I you go. Now, 77 and a half. I ain't playing that. I ain't playing. Homie, don't play that. Maybe play the Wham. under on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, I'm going to take out that red. Whap. I'm not doing that one if it's 77 and a half. But I found 66 and a half on DraftKings. And I like I like it. Let's get to some of the unders here. And uh, for me, the first one's going to be the Orioles at 64 and a half. And yes, it's already a low number, but this Orioles team is is not very good. I mean, after John Means and even John Means, I'm not sure what we're getting out of him from a pitching standpoint. Um, I do think they're going to sell off some more pieces. They continue to rebuild. I think they're going to get bludgeoned by the other teams in this division, too. The Blue Jays are great. The Yankees are going to be the Yankees. The Red Sox will continue to be a very good offense. We'll see what happens without sale how they do but i mean really i just i look at this east and it's such a monstrous division i think it's really hard oh yeah and that Rays team that i already picked the over on i mean the the orioles are going to be in for a long season the nationals i think are as well uh, i know it's been encouraging to see patrick corbin pitch a little bit better uh, in this spring, I understand that they've got some young talent potentially to break through still on this team. I know Juan Soto is the best player on the planet, but 71 and a half. I still like the under there. I think this is a team that really struggles, and I do think they're going to jettison more pieces like Nelson Cruz as the season goes on just because they really can't compete right now. They just can't do it, and I don't expect Strasburg to do anything. That thoracic outlet syndrome thing has really crushed many careers in Major League Baseball with pitchers over the last decade, and I expect it to be the same with him. So the under on the Nationals at 71 and a half, and then the Giants, the darling last year, the Cinderella, 85 and a half. I'm going to take the under here. Uh, their move from Gossman to Rodon. You can certainly argue that Rodon had a wonderful season last year. I'm going to argue he's got a track record of not pitching games, and I think that's a huge one. Buster Posey's gone. You missed that leadership that was there last year. Uh, Evan Longoria already on the shelf to open the season. Everything broke right, I think, for the Giants. And I'm not trying to take anything away from them as a team, but Welsh, to me, the Giants were a great story last year, but I'm not buying them again to repeat it in 2022, especially with some of those juggernaut teams you've got there, like the Padres pitching staff now and the Dodgers. So the under on the 85 and a half for the Giants, the under for the Nationals at 71 and a half, and the under for the Orioles at 64 and a half. Those are my three favorite. Who are your three favorite unders or two favorite unders you've got here potentially for us? Okay, so a couple a couple things real quick. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have the best and just most perfect sell of why you go over to the cheat sheet over on betting pros because I'm such a dummy. And when I was looking on DraftKings, absolutely was looking at the wrong team and the Tigers. And I was like, what is going on here? And had I on that moment just been on the, the sheet, I would have seen that I was completely wrong. So getting back to the Tigers one, and I was I was I was one or two off as well because I did the same dummy thing with the Royals, but the Royals were 74 and a half, I think, and that doesn't change anything for me. I still love the Royals ones. Tigers, big dummy, hands up, uh, go on the, the cheat sheet on betting pros. That's the way to do that one. Um, on the Giants one, I don't know, man. I don't I don't love that under because as you said, what everything you said to the Rays, you can just copy and paste over to the Giants. They just win. Okay. By the way, they made their rotation better. You know, they made that rotation better. Alex Cobb, Alex Wood, both really good pieces. You've got Desclafani in there. I don't know. I think they are continuously a sneaky team with a really good bullpen in a bad division. Dodgers, fantastic. Dodgers, we'll, we'll talk about them later. Padres, a little bit dicey. On my two favorite bets here, whatever the numbers are, the under on the Diamondbacks and the Rockies wins is for me this year. <laughs> the Rockies are going to not be great. I don't feel as confident maybe with that one, but the Diamondbacks one. Now, the Diamondbacks one, I think, is at 66 and a half. Yeah, the consensus is uh, 66 and a half on uh, the win totals here. And the Diamondbacks, even though they're going to try to put some of this together, it's not a great team. It's a Dodger team that's going to be pounding them. It's a Giants team that's going to get extra wins. So that 85... I actually, like me personally, I'm probably avoiding that one because I think they're super sneaky. I think they're super, super sneaky on this one. But I think the Diamondbacks are going to be one of the worst teams in baseball. Again, they continuously show mm -hmm. that. And that is why I would move off of them and I would go on the under. And then, you know, the only, only other one I want to look at real quick, Joe, because I'm going to give you it on the fly. After, yeah, yeah, well, we're going to do this one. 
even though this team <laughs> has been kind of similar to the Giants and the Rays over time, when you just had the A's trade Sean Manaya to the Padres and can continue to decimate that mm-hmm. team, they blatantly are staring you in the face to take an under because they are rebuilding, and I don't think they're going to do it quick because they don't have a lot of young pieces that are ready to come up. 68 and a half. They are a higher win total than the Arizona Diamondbacks. I don't think so, Scooter. 68 and a half. I'm going to take the under. Betting consensus, betting pros consensus shows minus 122. So you're almost getting out of like good juice range. So give me the A's, give me the Rockies, and boy, give me the Diamondbacks unders. Yeah, I love the A's one too. I could not agree more. All right, let's switch gears to a little hardware. Let's talk about MVP. We'll start in the American League. Vlad Guerrero right now is sitting at consensus at plus 300. Same as Shoei Otani right around there, plus 350. Now at BetMGM, Vlad Guerrero is plus 500. Interesting note there. Mike Trout is at plus 375 in the consensus line, but at BetMGM, you can get him for plus 450 right now on FanDuel, plus 550. Those are kind of the odds-on favorites in the American League. So I still uh, am of the mind that as long as Shohei Otani continues to pitch and hit, if he's going to throw 140 innings this year and he's going to hit anything close to what he did last year, I don't know how anyone else wins most valuable player. He is literally pitching and hitting at a very high level. It doesn't matter what Trout does. It doesn't matter what Vlad does. I told you last year, Vlad could win the Triple Crown. I would still vote for Otani if I had a vote. Um, and if you're looking right now for the best line on Otani right now, BetMGM is the best place at plus 350. You can get it because some have it at 300, some at 340. But to me, it's still Otani in terms of favorites. But if I'm going to look a little deeper, Welsh, and I'm going to dig and I'm trying to make a, a case for somebody, plus 2200 on Luis Robert, who I know is a, a mm. favorite of yours. You're looking for a narrative, right? It's a high-profile team, a team that, if everything breaks right, could win 95 to 100 games, right? If Lynn comes back healthy and, you know, they just kind of roll the White Sox. We're just scratching the surface of how good Luis Robert can be. At plus 2,200, he's my favorite of the long shots for American League MVP. How do you feel about the favorites, and how do you feel about any long shots potentially that you would want to put money on? I've already put money on Otani and Robert. Those are my two guys. You have any guys you like in the American League? Uh, I just wanted to add, I agree with the Otani stuff. Uh, DraftKings does have him at 400. So that would actually, mm-hmm. I don't think it's just curated yet. So that would actually be the current best odds. I really like okay. that if you can jump oh, in. Oh, good. Yeah, plus four. <laughs> I mean, the problem too is with Otani is the only thing that takes him away is injury. And that's still very, mm-hmm. there's a big possibility very that's real. out there. It is that's very, wh- very That's why real. he's not a minus number. Like he should be a minus number. He's so much far and away uh, a, a favorite in that sense because he does something that nobody else can do. And that's why right. it's, it's the injury risk that makes it still three to one. And that's why it's easy money to throw out there because it's still plus 400. Now, here's the only thing I don't mean to extend all this conversation, but here's the only thing that I do wonder. Is there going to, you know how they just created like the Otani rule out there where Otani mm. can now stay in the game as a DH if he comes out. I wonder if there's going to be an MVP Otani rule that, just think about this. If Otani continues to do what he does, that MVP will never go to anybody else by this logic. I just wonder if there's going to be a narrative to writers uh, and voters where They've seen him do this. The expectation is there. And they're now looking for other players to do something otherworldly, even though it is the best player. So I only put that out there to say, monitor that. It's the easiest bet you could do. You got to go Shohei Otani. If I'm going to go deeper, two that I like. Um, I, I mean, I hate to say it. I like Byron Buxton at eighteen hundred. He's a little bit. Fa- he's oh, a little sure. bit. He's a long shot. Why not? He's a little bit higher of a favorite than Robert, which I actually don't like that. I I like Robert a little bit better. Uh, but at the same odds, uh, and that was on uh, just DraftKings. One one of the ones I really like, and I think it is on BetMGM. They're giving you the best odds right now. Uh, no, no, no. It's actually FanDuel. When I look at the betting pros cheat sheet here, is Bobichet. At plus 3,000. I love you 3,000, Boba Shet. And I think that's a really <laughs> solid bet for a uh, five-tool five tool player on a f- that's on a team that is going to stack up wins. And I know we always put our focus in to Vladimir Guerrero Jr. But Boba Shet at plus 3,000, that's pretty solid. So I like your Robert, Buxton, Bichette. Those would be my big long shots, but Otani at 400. I'll tell you what. You know, I always struggle with guys who are on the same team like Vlad and Bichette. Uh, typically it would be Otani and Trout, but because Otani does what he does, unless Trout is going to start closing that games. That they take away from each other. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, no, it, it's, that's actually really do. smart. 
typically they do because how do you how do you disseminate them? You know, it's the same thing. I yeah. have a problem with the Dodgers in the National League. Like right now, you have Trey Turner, you have Freddie Freeman, you have all those guys towards the top of the board, along with uh, Mookie Betts. Right, all those guys are towards the top of the board of MVP. I mean, Robert uh, kind to... of has that as well, though, with Eloy Jimenez and and Jose Abreu. They're, they're he can star be power there. Like Abreu is a really good player. Aloy is a we all love Aloy Jimenez, but I think the public vision of him is still he's a good player who's young and we'll see. Whereas if Robert has a 30 30 season, let's say that's going to that's going to trend upwards and he's going to be like the new hot. Look at this superstar guy uh, in the National League, a little bit trickier, obviously, because we're talking about it. You know, it's it's a tougher road here. Juan Soto's on a terrible team. <laughs> so he is the consensus yeah. number one guy at plus 300. That's a tough sell. Fernando Tatis is going to miss too much time. I hate to be boring, Welsh, but I'm right back at Bryce Harper, who was the guy that I picked yep. last year. You can get him at 10 to 1 on BetMGM right now. The consensus line is plus 650. I would run to BetMGM for that one at that 10 to 1 because to me, even though they added Castellanos and Schwarber, they're still more visioned as ancillary pieces, whereas Harper's the star. He's the guy that carried him. And we all know these awards sometimes go in clusters. You get guys winning back to back or two out of three, whether it be Cy Young or MVP. So I think the Harper narrative is still very strong and he's viewed as the guy and the leader. And I think he would be my one and only wager in the National League that I would want to make. But how about you? Do you like Harper? Do you like somebody else potentially for this award? Yeah, so I love the Harper one and you know, the smart bet to do on these, and I think you've kind of alluded to it on all this type of stuff in Team Futures, is set a couple, you know, increase your odds. Right. You know, it, it, you don't have to go crazy units, but it's like, if you're like, hey, I want to spend a hundred bucks on all these guys, you know, on different stuff. And it's like, get into MVP awards and maybe, you know, pick two or three and odds on in at the end, if you're betting, you're going to make money, you know, if, especially if you don't go nuts with it. So I love the Harper one, but here is a side one that I'm going to throw out to you. And on FanDuel, you're getting plus 900. Now, the only thing I don't like about this is you get better odds in other places on Bryce Harper, but I'm going to throw out Ronald Acuna. So Ronald Acuna is going to start DHing in April. He's going to miss up to two weeks. That's all we're looking at. Then he's going to start DHing and then hit the field. This is a fantastic Braves team that is going to be playoff bound, that's going to win, divisionally is going to be up there. And Ronald Acuna fighting through, that's going to be a narrative, fighting through DHing while he was hurt, coming back from injury. And if he puts up... I mean, projections are wild on Acuna right now. If he puts up the numbers, yes, there's stars there, but it's stars in the same respect that Robert has stars. Acuna is the guy. If he puts up a 35-25 season while missing a little bit of time and bringing them up to one of the best teams in baseball, he's going to be uh, in that conversation. It's crazy that we're not picking a Dodger here, but they all kind of eat into each other, I suppose. Trey and they do, Chris. I, I think but I'll go with Acuna. Do, I feel... I think it's just it's hard to how do you peel off Turner from bets from Freeman? Like, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. it, unless two guys get hurt and one guy carries them. And that's that's a lot to ask. Uh, it's Cy Young. Different story here. You got Garrett Cole, of course, you know, the Yankee at the top of the board, the American League, a plus 425. Uh, in the American League, you also got Shane Bieber, plus 750 on the consensus line. Uh, you got Robbie Ray to repeat over at plus 800. So those are kind of the favorites. I still go to Lucas Giolito at 10 to 1. I Love. like those odds there. Uh, but for me, the really fun one is going down to Justin Verlander, who the consensus is plus 1600. But at BetMGM, you can get this at 20 to 1. At FanDuel, you can get it to 20 to 1. Wow. Verlander, if he gets back to that form where he's striking out 290 guys, 300 guys, and he's got a two ERA and a, and a 1.0 something whip. Justin Verlander could easily get back and he's a great narrative story. He's, you know, the, the crown jewel, if you will, on a Hall of Fame career coming back from Tommy John because, you know, Garrett Cole did struggle sometimes. Shane Bieber did struggle. Both had the sticky stuff issues, right? We got Verlander coming back here. To me, he's the most exciting long shot. G Lito is the one I like who's a little bit more in between. But to me, Verlander, especially we can get him at 20 to 1 in some places, that's the dude I want to put money on early. And I have. And I've also put money on G Lito. So anybody I'm talking about today, I've made investments in. And then it's anything from like $10 to $100 just to be transparent because I don't try to advise anything that I'm not in because I think that's called bad advice. Now, when you're looking at this market, anything pop out to you in the American League Welsh? I love the Lucas Giolito one. That would be, uh, I have not made all of my futures bets. That will be one that I make on Lucas Giolito. I was around him multiple times at White Sox camp. He looks as jacked as he's ever done before. <laughs> uh, also, you know, this is a weird, dumb thing, but like, it really seemed like arbitration was like, 
a weight on him. I, I saw him the day he signed his arbitration, and he seemed like the monkey was off his back. He seemed so much more relaxed. The team's going to be more reliant on him as well, with Lance Lynn going down. That That's probably my absolute favorite. I mean, you nailed both of the great ones. Verlander, too. It's the sneakiest one out there, and getting, you know, plus 2,000 is such a good bet um, as far as AL. The only other one, but I never make bets on, like, repeat, repeats, especially for a guy that popped like this. But, you you know, Robbie Ray going to Seattle, it's kind of interesting, but I'm probably not doing it. Odds are all right. Bet MGM is giving you uh, 12 to 1, but, you mm-hmm. know, I don't know. Like, I think he will be important and he will be in the race. This would be one where it's like finishing, you know, could I get a bet on finishing top three in the Cy Young? I would like right. that. But uh, Giolito and you can and Verlander. some places. Yeah, you can. Some but Giolito and Verlander, are the, I think, are the ones. In the National League, you got Corbin Burns at plus 600 is the favorite consensus-wise, and then Scherzer at plus 650. These odds have changed significantly over the last 48 hours after the Jacob deGrom news because deGrom was up there as well. That has now changed a lot. You've got Woodruff at plus 800. I keep landing on Walker Bueller, who I think really has a shot to win 20 games, which is a feat we don't see very often. Bullpen's really good. The offense is really good. The division at the bottom part is a little weak. Walker Bueller plus 750. You can get him at plus 900 on MGM. To me, Walker Bueller's where I want to make my investment in the National League. I don't love a ton of the other guys outside of him. Uh, you know, Burns and Scherzer are always good investments. If you want to invest in them, that's fine. Max Free to plus 1,100, maybe, just maybe he takes another step forward. But I don't know. In the National League, to me, I'm just trying to keep it simple. And to me, uh, it's Walker Bueller's race to lose this year. I think this is his quote unquote Cy Young season after contending and being in that conversation last year. What do you think about National League Cy Young? Well, would have been DeGrom. Would have been DeGrom for me. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, it's a problem. I mean, DeGrom at this point, uh, you know, what can I know. you do? It's just. No, no. I mean, you're not now. You're not now. Uh, Scherzer plus 700. You know, where you say Bueller, I like Scherzer and the odds are not that far off. Um, even though there's a little bit of banged upness. I like the Scherzer one, probably my favorite, but you mentioned the other guy I like, and you can get a 25 to one on FanDuel right now is Max Freed. You know, just same repeaty stuff. Go back to the Bra- uh, go back to the Braves. See him pick up a bunch of wins. You know, if he jumps into 15, 16 wins on one of the best teams in the NL, and he is the linchpin to it, that I think he is a really good long shot guy for that award because there's not a lot of arms and there's a lot of injuries that are surrounding that area. There's probably someone we're not even talking about or thinking about, but Max and Freed would be my uh, both Maxes. I would, I'll see all Max <laughs> and Freed. Yep, those those would be my uh, my money one and my long shot one. All right, let's move over to Rookie of the Year. This is exciting because this is one you might want to jump on as soon as you listen to the podcast before it changes. So Bobby Wood Jr. in the American League at plus 280 is the consensus. Uh, then you got Torkelson at plus 500. Julio Rodriguez at plus 550, who mm. we just found out before recording is going to break with the team and be their opening day. Normally, when it comes to Rookie of the Year, I wait it out a little bit. I've already put money on Bobby Witt. I've already put money on Julio. I put bigger money on Julio because it's a bigger payoff potentially because I think there's that there's that path for him. But I still think Bobby Witt deserves to be the favorite. I think he is going to actually be the favorite who wins, which is also something that doesn't happen very often. A couple of years ago, I remember having arguments with people about how Gavin Lux was basically a two-to-one favorite for Rookie of the Year. I said, guys, he's missed all this development time in 2020, all the crazy COVID stuff. I don't even know. I think we might invest in a pitcher or something like that. It might be easier to invest in this guy. We're all giving him the award. Spoiler alert, he didn't win. And now I think Bobby Witt is that guy that might be able to buck that trend where the favorite is the favorite for a reason, and he might be the wire-to-wire favorite too. But Julio could get in that conversation. Now, you got some other guys in the American League too you think you can compete. Well, I mean, yeah, you got Spencer Torkelson in there that's going to be from day one, um, you know, and hitting in a pretty prominent piece of the lineup. Adley's going to be up there at some point. Adley's impossible, though, because he's not day one, and the Orioles are going to be atrocious. You could throw O'Neill Cruz. Uh, that's NL. Um, there was one other. No, I got all NL Jane other guys. Jane is probably out there too, but he is already starting. I, I don't like. Hurt. Yeah, Jeremy Pena, Riley Green's hurt already. It's a. It's to me. It's it's a favorite kind of race in the AL. In the, the AL, there guys. it is the three guys. Bobby Witt is the only one I would feel putting hard cash on like really good cash and the best odds are currently DraftKings at, pl- at 310 plus 310 bet gm has got 300 which is pretty decent that would be my hard odds if i want and i do by the way <laughs> to have a fun bet i gotta go julio rodriguez as well because julio is electric and 
this team, uh, you know, when you look at these teams as well, here, look at the top three rookie guys, Torque, Tigers, Wit, Royals, Julio, Mariners. What's the difference between these teams? The Mariners are hands down the best team here. And sure. that is something that is going to carry a little bit of weight as far as like statistically, if these guys are close, but Julio Rodriguez at plus 600 on DraftKings right now, right now, as this has been announced, mm -hmm. this all could change. Like you said before, I like Julio as a long bet. I really like Bobby Witt. And if I wanted to just feel comfortable getting a win, you could go torque. But then I feel like you're really eating into your potential money. I would go high bet. Like this would, of all the stuff we've done, I wouldn't be like big unit betting. This would be a big unit bet for me on Bobby Witt. And then I would go smaller, uh, you know, maybe cut it in half since it's plus 600 on Julio Rodriguez and, uh, you know, cash it at the end of the year. This is the best one. That's the most. That's my favorite oh, one. Yeah. Is the rookie of the year one, but no surprise for me. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and like I said, Julio. I think you make a great point there, which is Seattle's probably going to be the most you know public team that's going to get a lot of attention potentially. And Julio Rodriguez will go along with that. That's a really yeah. good situation to wager on. And the National League gets a little murkier. Uh, Seiya Suzuki is at plus three fifty. I'm not running there. Anyo Cruz plus 400. He's starting the year in the minor leagues. This might be the time to bet on him if you want to get him while he's learning to play the outfit a little bit in AAA. In the National League, not clearer. Uh, you've got names like Kybert Ruiz, Joey Bart. I hate betting on catches. To me, the only guy that I've bet on so far for the National League is Hunter Green at plus 800. I like the mm -hmm. odds. I know he's a pitcher. Sometimes that can be a dicey thing, but he is starting in that rotation. I think if he pitches well, he'll probably leave him in there the entire season. Uh, maybe he'll max out at 160 innings potentially this year, somewhere around there. But I think that would be enough to get it done in the National League because it's not a great crop unless somebody really pops out of nowhere. So Hunter Green's my guy in the NL Welsh. Do you have a guy in the National League, Cy Young Race? Um, I do want to say I think Suzuki's the safe bet to play. I don't see an issue making that bet, um, even though he's not as fun or anything like that. I just don't see the issue making it. You get plus 380 over on DraftKings right now. Here's, uh, I got, oh, by the way, on the Hunter Green one, I actually like Nick Lodolo a little bit better. I think he's a better pitcher, and he's going to be fifth in the rotation and a rookie. But the the deeper guy that I would try to make a bet on, you want to talk about guys coming out of nowhere. We still haven't heard if he is going to break, but it might be soon. But Bryson Stott, Bryson Stott with uh, the Phillies, mm -hmm. they've talked about him being a guy that was going to break camp as the third baseman. He's a shortstop. He is... Um, He's super patient. He walks. He doesn't strike out. He can jump into homers. And this is another high team win. And he's plus a thousand, uh, you know, 10 times on uh, on DraftKings right now, if you wanted to jump on that. So I like stuff. That's a much more wide open race. So I might take some chances, some liberties with the Rookie of the Year award because I don't think it's locked in. Your O'Neill Cruz one is a good one, but I would probably go Suzuki and then I would throw a big futures on stock. All right, let's switch gears, Welsh, to the division winners. Uh, most of the favorites are minus money, so you're not going to get a whole lot of juice there. But what you want to do is look for ones that have potential. To me, the ones that stick out right away, if things do break out for the Yankees and they maybe acquire another pitcher, plus 250, that's something you can bet on. But it's the Yankees, so you're always going to have that premium. However, the consensus is plus 250. The Padres plus 325, that's an interesting one because with this pitching staff, if they all are right, and we're talking Darvish, Manaya, Snell, Clevenger, potentially Musgrove was great last year. That's a formidable rotation. If they stay healthy and Tatis comes back and is Tatis and they just tread water offensively for the first few months, Padres at plus 325 are not impossible. Neither are the Angels at plus 350 if they get some pitching with Otani, with Syndergaard, with Sandoval. Those guys are uh, certainly in it as well. And maybe you can make a case for the Phillies with DeGrom out to plus 450 if you want to get a little funky there. If you think that the Braves aren't as good as they were last year without Freddie Freeman or however you want to see that. I don't. But the Angels at plus 350, the Padres at plus 325. The Yankees at plus 250. Those are the few division teams uh, winners potentially in terms of numbers. I think you can get behind. Others are all, you know, Dodgers are minus 200. That ship has sailed already. So yeah. anything else stick out to you when it comes to division winners, Welsh? No, I think you, you nailed them. I mean, if you wanted to get, I could see Mariners fans, you could always throw out a plus 450 if Mariners you really want to get terrible. crazy. Yeah. No, I mean, if you wanted to get crazy. This is not the place where I'm looking to get crazy and you're going to just have to bite 
you know, some of that juice, but just, you know, take your money home and maybe make some bigger bets, especially on the big dogs. If you're comfortable, you know, Astros 162, but no, I think you, you nailed the most. I mean, the other thing you can get tricky with is just like a really good division with a couple teams that are vying for that same spot, you know? So if you're looking at like the Mets and Braves and you just go, well, you know, the Mets at 175 with everything that they've done, I'm going to take that bet as DeGrom comes back and they're going to be able to win this division. Bam, you're getting some plus money on that, but no, you, you nailed it. If you want to bet the Dodgers for anything, you bet them to win the the uh, the National League at plus two twenty five right now. Uh, the Astros are up at the top at plus four fifty. The Jays at plus four seventy five in the American League. The Braves to repeat to go to the World Series again plus five hundred. Uh, same thing with the White Sox. Who I'm I'm in that White Sox world still. I'm still buying the White Sox. White Sox and Dodgers right now feel right to me. That's where I'd be putting my money. Um, but for you, Welsh, who do you want to to win those American League and National League? Where would you be putting your money? I mean, maybe it's on a team like Milwaukee, too. That pitching is spectacular. They are plus 700. That would be a fun one. And you can write that narrative because in a short series, that pitching could be absolutely electric, especially if Yelich bounces back and becomes the player he was a couple of years ago. Yeah, I mean, I would throw out the Padres uh, is all crazy it is because I just want to point this out. The Padres have an insane rotation of depth with guys like Darvish and Snell. And obviously there's question marks that are always going, but you put them in a small series against anyone and they could throw out Joe Musgrove, you Darvish and Blake Snell. Then the next series they could throw out Clevenger and Sean Manaya. Plus they're going to get Fernando Tatis Jr. back. That actually might be one of my favorites at plus 850 uh, as far as NL goes. AL, I kind of like the Blue Jays at 475. I think that's a fun one. I might throw in the Yankees as well as plus 550. I'm probably, this is another spot. I wouldn't be getting too crazy. The Padres are as crazy as I'm going to get at plus 850. Yeah, Padres a good one. Brewers, I think, are a good one, too. Uh, let's go to the World Series winner. Dodgers, obviously, the favorites at 475 on the plus side. Uh, you've got plus 875 for the Blue Jays, which I understand. The Astros at 10 to 1. Uh, the Yankees are at 11 to one. Same with the Braves and White Sox. I'm still going with the White Sox. I believe in the White Sox this year. I think it's their wow. turn to kind of learn. Um, and, you know, these Dodgers, you know, as, as great as they are, you know, what if Kershaw falters again and gets hurt? What's the back of that rotation like? I don't know. In a short series, they worry me a little bit more. And I think that when I'm looking, I'm trying to look for those teams that might be on that short series pitching. The White Sox can throw Giolito, Lynn, Cease, and Kopech at you. That's a lot. That is a lot. So for me, that's, that's where I'm going at plus 1100. That's my favorite wager on the board. Do you have a favorite that you like in terms of where you might put your money early for World Series, Welsh? Uh, I, like, I think I'm sticking with, I mean, the Do like, I just want to point out, like the Dodgers, I think, are just synonymous with this. And you just kind of go with them unanimously. Mm -hmm. I'm putting any bet on them because I think they're ridiculous. But look at those Blue Jays at 875. They've continuously been aggressive in the market. They replaced... Robbie uh, Ray with Kevin Gossman, which I really like that move. You've got Barrios in there. Plus, they're still trying to be aggressive. There's still rumors out there of Jose Ramirez. What happens if they go out and acquire Jose Ramirez at the mm -hmm. trade deadline if no extension with him is done and they've got the assets to do it? They seem hyper, hyper aggressive. They've got some bullpen, they've got a good rotation, and they've got a fantastic offense of stars that are out there that almost, you know, nine to one, I like the Blue Jays. All right, there you have it, everybody. Make sure you head over to bettingpros.com so you can take a look at all these consensus lines. And every day, that prop bet cheat sheet will be out there for you. And we'll be talking about it on Leading Off as well. That's on our MLB side of our content on Fantasy Pros. Again, that's the Fantasy Pros MLB channel. But we encourage you all to subscribe to our Betting Pros channel on YouTube as well, youtube.com slash bettingpros, so you can always get the latest in terms of all the pods and all the information and short videos and live streams we do here in the wagering market. And baseball is going to be a great wagering market this year. It's going to be wide open. It's going to be super fun. I can't wait to do it, and I hope you guys are excited about it as well. That'll do it for us, but the story of the game goes on. For the Welsh, I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.